On some days, when I am outside myself, I find it prudent to have a panic attack. I felt it brewing all day, just this side of consciousness, ready for rampage. I've had few enough that I don't recognize the symptoms. The buzzing mind inside a head made of stone. The frustration from nowhere with nowhere to go. Feeling chased on the empty streets of my own mind. Someone behind me wishes me ill, but it's me. It's always me. Depression is funny, isn't it? To spend most of the day sitting on your own shoulder only to slam back into yourself like a hammer to the chest. It's funny that you can laugh so hard that your ribs feel like they're in a vice. And you feel the same way when you cry so hard that you can't pull air into your shriveled lungs. How are you supposed to differentiate when your own body tells you they're the same feeling? I made it to my room, at least. My little corner of nowhere. I felt the tears ooze behind my eyes, but they didn't come until I heard the click of the stupid electric lock on the stupid door of this stupid room. My practical self, little in light gray-blue trailing just behind me, says, You're overheated. Take off your jacket. So I do, between hyperventilating, gasping, coughing, silent sobs. Can't let people hear me. I don't know how to let them. You'll need tissues says Little Grey Practical, reaching out with my hands for a full box. I grab it. What else to do? You need to be comfortable. So I sit on the bed, and cry on the bed, and choke on sobs that I can't let myself hear on the bed. It's amazing how much snot comes from nowhere, isn't it? No idea where it comes from but it fills a tiny tower of tissues that Practical dutifully balls up and throws away, so I don't have to. So I can cry. Cry until little blue-gray Practical says, Okay, it's time to stop. You're done now. And that's that. I am empty of tears and snot. Wrung out like a tube of toothpaste that no one will admit is empty, and little Practical rubs my back, stands me up, walks me to my closet, puts a clean shirt on my body, wraps me in a blanket, and shushes soothing words through my brain. I can't say that I feel better, just like throwing up will make you feel, not better, but cleaned out. Relieved, in a way, to have purged something heavy and negative from this body that feels as though it isn't mine some days. But I feel that I have accomplished something practical today. I'll pencil in my next panic attack later. Hello, lovely people. That was a poem that I wrote immediately after my first panic attack at school. It was the second one I had had in my life. I didn't really realize what was happening at first. It felt like I was being squeezed inside, and I felt like I was late for something. Alice's little white rabbit going, I'm late, I'm late, holding up that dumb little pocket watch that he has. And I didn't realize what was happening until I had reached the door of my dorm, and I realized, oh my god, I've felt this before, I know what this is. And I was terrified that my roommates would be in the little living room section of the dorm, and that they would see me start to break down. They weren't, and I managed to keep myself together until, like it says in the poem, I clicked the little stupid electric lock that they put on those doors, and I dropped my bags and took off my coat, took off my shoes and socks, and I grabbed a box of tissues and sat on the bed, and hyperventilated and cried and shook until it was all over. And I turned over and fell asleep. And when I woke up, I didn't feel better, but there was a feeling of relief, like, phew, I got that out of the way and now I can get on with things. I don't want to make it seem like I'm glorifying panic attacks in any way, but feeling of relief isn't worth what a panic attack puts me through but sometimes it almost feels like I need to bring one on. It's a good way to get rid of extra feelings that I 
don't know how to deal with. And it's easier to just lie back and have a panic attack and let all that be purged so I can get on with life. But let's talk about the painting a little bit and why I'm talking about panic attacks while you're watching me paint this. I don't think this idea started out as something relating to panic attacks. I started, I started with the figure, like I do most of the time. Just a quick sketch, some gesture, just to show the movement of a body. And it showed emotion. And I thought about what that emotion was, and while I was working on it, because I hadn't actually planned to film this painting, but a couple days ago, when I was working on it, I was excited to be working on it. I was excited about where it was going and how it was going and how my brush strokes were actually getting me where I wanted to go instead of the other thing. But then I felt the panic attack creeping up. And I thought, why? Why is this happening to me now? I'm not more or less stressed about things than I usually am. I wasn't thinking about all the things in my life that caused me stress. I was excited about painting. I was happy in my painting space. But I recognized the signs, so I rinsed the paint off my brush and put things away as much as I could and went up to my room, closed the door, and lay down on my bed with my tissues and cuddled my whale shark plush. And I waited for the panic attack to come. I even tried hyperventilating a little bit to get it going. And it never came. And it got me thinking, why? Why did it do this now? And then not even give me the relief of getting all that crap out. And I don't really have an answer for that. I have no idea why that happened. But when I went back down to the studio to keep painting, because I obviously wasn't going to have a panic attack anymore, I looked at the figure, and I looked at my original sketch, and my more in-depth concept for this painting, and I thought, I know what this needs, and I know, I know why I'm painting it now. It's kind of a ham-handed metaphor for being in over your head, and I guess the bobber with the other little figures on it is the people that are holding it together, keeping their heads above water, they're not drowning yet and they're struggling, but they've got a lifeline. And sometimes, when they have a little extra of that lifeline to give, they can guide it down and share a little bit of light with someone who can't see the light, who's so far down in the dark that they can't pull themselves back up. And all they hear down there is the crushing silence of having nobody else there. I'm really sorry this got dark. <laughs> That tends to happen a little bit when I just talk and think. I don't think I'm a dark person, not generally, but sometimes shit happens, right? I think the overall message in this painting is that there is hope. Even if you're not doing so great yourself, there's usually gonna be somebody who's keeping things afloat that can, that can help you out a little bit. I found that to be true in my life, even though panic attacks are something I tend to prefer to have alone, because I, I know the steps to get through my panic attacks. I know this comes, and then this happens, and then I feel this way, and then I sleep, and I wake up and I feel a little better. I've had people try and help me through panic attacks before, and it just doesn't, doesn't work for me. But it's nice to have the people afterwards to remind me that I'm not just somebody who has panic attacks and that they don't define me and <laughs> I've tried to figure out a way to make this sound a little less hokey but I mean the cliches are there for a reason right anyway I'm I'm out of things to say about panic attacks I don't want to think about them anymore so lovely people thank you for sticking with me if you're still here listening to me ramble I I hope you enjoyed the painting I really enjoyed working on it, and it turned out that this is this is one of my favorites of my more recent works. I like how this one looks, and I like how it makes me feel, and I like what I was thinking about when I painted it, despite having the panic attacks. So thank you again, and I hope you're all staying safe 
and well, and I'll see you in the next video.